Heyo everybody, Zian over here from Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you our reviews of both Famicom Detective Club The Missing Heir and Famicom Detective Club The Girl Who Stands Behind on Nintendo Switch. Now, both of these reviews were originally written by Kate Gray for NintendoLife.com, but were reworked into this video by me. Now, since both of these games are launching on Switch at the exact same time and they're very similar in style and they're sort of connected in ways, we thought it'd be best to just incorporate both of these reviews into one big video. So if you happen to only want to check out one of the reviews, we'll leave timestamps down below so you can jump around however you feel. And so to start out, we'll be talking about Famicom Detective Club The Missing Air. Famicom Detective Club is brilliant, but it's also incredibly stupid sometimes. But it's still somehow brilliant. It's both at the same time like a child who's just argued that if glue is non-toxic, then there's really nothing wrong with eating a whole cup of it, right? Sure, sticky child, do whatever you want. You're technically right, congratulations! But you've also just eaten an entire cup of glue, and now your bowel resembles a kindergarten art project. A plus, five stars. Woo! Famicom Detective Club comes in two parts. The Missing Air, which first came out in 1988 in Japan, making it almost as old as Mario. And then there was Famicom Detective Club The Girl Who Stands Behind, a sequel which followed in 1989. The two games have never been released in English, other than unofficial fan translations, until now. And the remake, with new art, localization, and Japanese voice acting, was a surprise that not even the most diehard Nintendo fans could have expected. And sadly, since nobody really expected these games, the reveal on the Nintendo Direct earlier this year largely flew under the radar. Many viewers, some of us even included, had little idea of the provenance and importance of these two games, and they just looked a bit like another detective game borrowing from Ace Attorney. But of course, they're much older and set up a lot of the tropes that Ace Attorney used over a decade later. Both parts of Famicom Detective Club are about a young man whose name you choose at the beginning, Kate of which decided to go with Bad Guy Murder Man, I chose Shinji Akari because I couldn't think of any other name that was more Japanese than that, and John Cartwright simply went with John Cartwright because, well, here we are. <laughs> In The Missing Heir, the main character is investigating a suspicious death as part of the Utsugi Detective Agency, despite only being 17 years old, and soon he gets caught up in much more than he bargained for. The story itself is as you might expect from a Japanese murder mystery. A dash of the supernatural, a rumored curse, a question of inheritance, and a whole bunch of family drama that slowly oozes out like blood under a bandage. We won't say too much here about the story because it's much more fun to go in blind but it's a good story, well told, even if the idea of a 17 year old detective and his high school sidekick is a little suspect. You'll spend a lot of the missing air alone, even though each day will end with you and Ayumi Tachibana, the aforementioned sidekick, recapping the day and speculating on what all of it means. Having played both games, it's a little disappointing that Ayumi gets sidelined in the missing air, because she plays a much more vital role in the girl who stands behind. But but most of the missing air is focusing on the protagonist's own adventure anyway. Much like Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney's investigation sections, your time will be spent walking from location to location, looking at items, and mostly talking to people like Zenzo, the butler of the mysterious wealthy family at the heart of the case, or one of the skittish, miserable family members who want nothing to do with you. But with this being a mystery, there's an extra twist. You also have amnesia, because of course you do. Famicom Detective Club shares a lot of DNA with the Ace Attorney series, despite being its predecessor by 13 years. And part of that shared DNA includes the frustration of not knowing what you're supposed to do all the time. Like other old school text-based games, The Missing Air is annoyingly hard at times, not because you haven't figured out what to do, but because you know what you're supposed to do but can't work out what arcane series of actions the game requires of you in order to do it. One scene involves 
involves yelling the name of a character who isn't actually in the scene several times in order to scare the man you're talking to into telling you a secret. Another scene might need you to ask someone a question multiple times, getting no answer each time, and eventually that character will say, wow, you really care about this subject, don't you? <laughs> All right, I, I guess I'll tell you. One particularly annoying solution is to look at an item in the background, which will spur a character into a line of dialogue that has very little to do with the thing you're actually looking at in the background. <sighs> There's an informal name for this phenomenon in old games, and it goes by Cat Hair Mustache Puzzles, after the infamously ridiculous puzzle in Gabriel Knight 3 that required players to combine cat hair with maple syrup in order to impersonate a man that didn't even have a mustache. Yep, I did not know that, and now we are all smarter. Thank you so much, Kate. Granted, the missing air isn't quite that nonsensical, but there's definitely still a lot of, well, god darn it, how was I supposed to know I was supposed to put the pencil in the receptacle? Situations. We've all been there, right? But the great thing about all of this is it almost doesn't matter. The visual upgrades made to the game are above and beyond what you would expect from an under-the-radar remake of a 30-year-old Japanese game. The animation technology used to make characters move and speak is reminiscent of how TV show Archer does it. A lot is achieved with a little, and the characters will tilt their heads, smile, and toss their hair with convincing personality. Be warned though that the image of dead bodies that pop up from time to time are pretty spooky with realistic and occasional gory detail, far beyond the rather gentle corpses you'd find in Ace Attorney. A few other quality of life improvements include the ability to check the text log by pressing the X button if you need a reminder of pretty much anything you've been told. You can also play the voice line too, which is just a really nice little feature. And when you restart the game, you can choose to read a short recap of what's happened so far. There's also the notebook which is reminiscent of Ace Attorney's court record which contains all the facts and rumors you've heard about people plus their age, names, and photos. And holding down the left bumper will fast forward through the text you've already read if you turn the option on. And as a neat little bonus, you can even change the soundtrack to the original Famicom version as well, although the modern orchestral version is much nicer in our opinion. You will spend a lot of the missing air cursing at the game for being obtuse, but you'll also spend a lot of it hooked on the unfolding mysteries and getting to know the various personalities in the game. Once you've figured out how the game wants you to play by repeating yourself a lot, it'll get a little easier at least, and you'll be able to really enjoy a hell of a good murder mystery. The Famicom Detective Club remakes are living history and are a chance to catch up on what you missed out on, either by being too young or not being able to speak Japanese. Though The Missing Air has its faults, those faults are largely down to that's just how games used to be, and it's held up remarkably well all the same. We here at Nintendo Life give Famicom Detective Club The Missing Air on Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. So now, let's see how the girl who stands behind stands up. As you'd expect, Famicom Detective Club The Girl Who Stands Behind is quite similar to its predecessor, in that it's a detective story starring the same protagonist, but as a prequel that's also a follow-up to the first game, it does a few things a little differently. It's strange to review The Girl Who Stands Behind as a standalone product when so much of it is so closely tied to The Missing Air, and we really do recommend that you play them both, even though you can just buy one and play one if you want. Anyone who enjoys Ace Attorney will enjoy these games, even as they find similar sources of frustration as the way to progress is less than clear. If we had to pick our favorite of the two, it would probably be The Girl Who Stands Behind. In The Missing Air, a lot of the side characters are quite unlikable or refuse to tell you anything for most of the game, slowing down progress by virtue of just being a bit useless. You might have figured out something early on, but the game will lead you by the hand until it decides it's ready to 
reveal it to you. The Girl Who Stands Behind improves on that a little, with a cast of intriguing characters who all seem to have a better motivation than stuck-up rich person who thinks you're beneath them. But that linearity is still very much present. The Girl Who Stands Behind is set in a high school, so you'll mostly be talking to teachers and students and circling around the same few classrooms to find new clues. Sometimes it can be a little annoying to be in the teacher's lounge again, but as you get to know the characters, you'll begin to become familiar with their regular haunts. Where the missing heir is about the main character and a mysterious rich family with a secret, the girl who stands behind is about a school rumor that might hide something terrible. When a student's corpse washes ashore on the banks of a river, finding out who killed her will invite the player into a much deeper story than they realize. Very much like the first game, there's a lot of supernatural weirdness going on. However, it's a lot spookier. The titular girl who stands behind is a rumor going around the school about the ghost of a blood-soaked student, and you'll spend a lot of the game expecting her to be right behind you at any moment. A few other improvements have been made to the way the missing heir did things. Although largely, the girl who stands behind is a new story in an old rapper, albeit a pretty solid one. The remember option from the missing heir, which was tricky to figure out sometimes, has been replaced with think, which is much more useful and easier to figure out where it might come in handy. And just like the first game, you can choose between the modern orchestral soundtrack or the original Famicom chiptunes. But the girl who stands behind also gives you the option of a Super Famicom soundtrack as well, as that game was remade for the Satellaview in Japan way back in the day. It's honestly pretty incredible how well these games stand up three decades after release. The stories are intriguing and full of twists, turns, and even an impressive amount of tension and fear, although it doesn't ever really get too scary, mind you. The visual upgrade, which we praised in The Missing Air, is still just as high quality in The Girl Who Stands Behind, although The Missing Air has a lot more beautiful moments of sunlight streaming through trees and beautiful vistas. The Girl Who Stands Behind, by virtue of being set in a town rather than the countryside, is a little little more of concrete buildings and rain clouds, but that's alright. There will be moments in The Girl Who Stands Behind where it feels a little like the game is hiding things from you for no real reason other than to stretch the plot out. Characters will be missing from their usual locations for days at a time, and things that seem really obvious like this one part with a wall that looks really weird, you'll know it when you see it, often go unexamined for far longer than seems necessary. But Ace Attorney does all of this as well, and if we can forgive everyone's favorite detective lawyer of his weird little quirks, then we can let it slide with Famicom Detective Club 2. And after you finish both games, you may find yourself wanting more of the adventures of uh, whatever it is you named your protagonist, and Ayumi Tachibana. And we don't blame you, but we're not sure if Nintendo is aiming to continue this 33-year-old series, given that Capcom's Ace Attorney production has slowed way down. And future Professor Layton games are all but dead in the West after Level 5 pulled out of their North American office. The future looks dark for murder mystery fans, it seems, but if Famicom Detective Club does well, and it really deserves to, then perhaps Nintendo will see it as a worthy successor to the throne that it built in the first place. Layton and Wright, watch out. There's a new and much younger detective on the block, and he's older than both of you. Think about that for a second. Famicom Detective Club The Girl Who Stands Behind is just as appealing and upgraded as The Missing Heir, and we really can't recommend one without the other, although you can play either separately. The story in The Girl Who Stands Behind is creepier and the characters are more likable, though they're also a little more forgettable at the same time. This double bill of murder mystery games is a must play though for anyone who loves the genre. We here at Nintendo Life give Famicom Detective Club The Girl Who Stands Behind on Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. If you'd like to check out our full written reviews, you could find those along with more news and information on Famicom Detective Club over at NintendoLife.com. Let us know in the comments down below if you're planning on picking up either or both of these, and let us know what you think about the game so far. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, then why don't you go ahead and check and see if that subscribe button is doing anything suspicious and just investigate it. Let us know what you find out. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there and we will see you next time.